Hello and welcome to BioRules Video Lessons. Today we are going to be talking about extinction, because extinction is forever. So first to talk, start talking about extinction, let's start with the most famous extinction event in history, the dinosaur's extinction. So basically, there was a meteorite around 66 million years ago, quite a long time ago, uh, that hit the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico and create gigantic wave, uh, you know, threw lots of particles into the air, caused massive volcano eruptions and changed drastically the weather all over the place, and the big reptiles got extincted. Okay? That was very fortunate for us mammals because the extinction of the dinosaurs opened space for mammals, especially for the big mammals, to evolve. On the other hand, the dinosaurs actually didn't get extincted. Okay? They have simply evolved. We call them birds. So this is something that is quite controversial. Some people don't accept this, but actually, you know, if you take a look on this video, it will tell the story about this extinction and you may have you know, a close look to a dinosaur on the left and to a bird on the right. They are actually quite similar. So some of the dinosaurs, especially the ones that have warm blood, that were not so big, uh, they they managed to survive and they evolved into birds that we know that we have nowadays. Okay, uh, the dinosaur extinction was one of five major historical extinctions. The dinosaur extinctions over there, around 65 million years ago, you know, in the by the end of Cretaceous, the beginning of the Quaternary. However, we had a few more at 200 million years ago, by the end of the Triassic, the beginning of the Jurassic there was one extinction. By around 250 million years ago, we had a massive extinction that extincted more than 6% of the families in the planet. So this was the biggest mass extinction ever, 250 million years ago, between the, between the Permian and the Triassic. And we had another one 360 million years ago between the Devonian and the Carboniferous, and we had one that was 445 million years ago uh, by the end of the Ordovician. So these are five major extinction events. So extinction events, they are uh, recurrent, they happen. Once in a while you have, sometimes you have more space between one major extinction event, sometimes you have less, but they usually happen. And what is happening is that nowadays we are witnessing the sixth major extinction event. And this one is not caused by volcanoes, or by the, uh, a meteorite, this one is being caused by human beings. We humans are changing so much our planet that we are leading to a massive extinction around the planet. Okay? So let's talk about some of these extinctions. A not so recent extinction, but not so long time ago as the dinosaurs, is the extinction of the mammoth. The woolly mammoth around 10,000 years ago got extincted. Okay? It was after the Ice Age, the planet was warming up, and these animals are clearly adapted to cold weather, so maybe they have got extincted because they didn't manage to endure the warming weather. Or, it also coincides with the race of humans. Okay? We used to hunt these guys, so have they been our first victims? Maybe the woolly mammoths were the first victims of humanity in this, the beginning of the sixth major extinction event. Another example, the Dodo, also not very recent, but no more recent than 10,000 years ago, that happened in the 17th century, was when Portuguese sailors arrived in Mauritius Island, specifically in 1598. And in 64 years, they led the Dodo to extinction. So Dodo was a bird, a big bird, and why have they been extincted? One, because they are easy to hunt. They are not scared by humans, so they were considered to be dumb. They are not afraid. They didn't know humans. And also because they were ground nester and they, the nests were easily predated by pigs and dogs. So in 64 years, humans led this, this species to extinction there in the Mauritius Islands. So this maybe was our first documented, clearly documented extinction. 
Okay? If we take a look on the, the, the history of extinctions, we are seeing an exponential growth. Okay? We have the, a few extinctions before the, the 20th century, and in the 20th century start growing faster and faster and faster, and we are now, now passing the 50,000 species extinct, and mainly because of us directly or indirectly. To name a few of them, golden toad in Costa Rica. This was a beautiful toad that exists in Costa Rica and it got extinct. At first, we, start, we thought it was because of global warming, changing the weather in the place where they live. Later, it was realized that it was probably because of a fungus called citrid fungus that is affecting many populations of amphibians and leading many populations of amphibians around the planet. What we don't know is why the citrid fungus are spreading now. Maybe it has to do with the changing environments you know, near the place that these guys live. So we are deforesting, not exactly where they live, but near where they live, which might be favoring this fungus to be growing. So yes, it probably had something to do with us humans. Another classic example of extinction, this one caused by humans, certainly, was the Carolina parakeet in the United States. This was a beautiful bird that were hunted for the feathers to make hats, and also because they used to eat the crops. So in 1918, they went into extinction. This is a classic, very good example of extinct animals by humans. Okay? We have some examples here, some are repeated here, don't bother with that. The golden toad is over there. Tasmanian tiger have been uh, uh, extinct. We have the Tasmanian wolf as well. Tasmanian wolf was extinct in the beginning of the, the 20th century because of the jingo that have introduced there and also for habitat loss. So there are many cases of extinctions. Find one recent and learn that one. You should be able to mention an example of extinction uh, of uh, a species, animal, plant or whatever, you know, that happened quite recently. And if you're talking about extinction, we should talk about conservation. How can we conserve a species so they don't get extinct? There are two basic ways. One of them is called in situ conservation. So in situ means in its original place. So to keep the species where they live, where they evolved. How do we do that? We create preserves. We create national parks. Okay? The advantage of this method of preservation is that when we build a preserve to preserve one species, we are actually keeping all the species of the preserve. So we're not only saving one species, we're saving many of them. So when we create a preserve to save the golden lion tamarind, in the Atlantic rainforest in Brazil. We are not saving only the golden lion tamarind. We are saying, saving the golden lion tamarind and everybody that lives in that area. Okay, so that's one uh, reason. Another reason, another advantage of in-situ conservation is that we maintain the food web. Okay, you have the animal, golden lion tamarind was saved, but everything that eats the golden lion tamarind and keeps the balance there, so the entire food web is also preserved. Okay? It maintains the natural behavior of the animals. They are in their natural environment, so they know how to hunt, how to escape predators. They know how to live. So this is not changed. We maintain the natural behavior. On the other hand, this is an expensive method. Buying land and keeping that land non-productive is expensive. Also, usually you need to manage to, to have guards to prevent hunting or uh, 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 people cutting down trees, so it's quite expensive to have this, and it's difficult, okay? It's difficult to avoid hunting, it's difficult to avoid cutting, it's not something easily done. But, if it can be done, it can be very efficient and it saves everybody in that place, okay? Uh, it can be aquatic or terrestrial, the famous ones are aquatic uh, terrestrial, but you have some aquatic. For example, here, this is a place that I went diving, and it's called Laje de Santos. It's, a, it's a, a preserve by the... It's you know, a few kilometers off the coast of Santos. And you go there by speedboat. And in that place, we find gigantic fish. You know, have meadows that are you no know, bigger than me. And those fish, you don't find them anywhere else. Although it's an open ocean, if you go to other little islands you know, near the coast of Sao Paulo where fishing is allowed, you don't find those big fish anymore. Because whenever one starts growing over there, 
it end up fished. But if you go around that rock, no large Santos, you are going to have big fauna living there. You're going to have no things much more preserved. So aquatic environments can also be preserved. Okay. Uh, um, an alternative to in situ conservation is ex situ conservation. So ex situ conservation means out of its natural habitat. So the classic example of preserving organism out of its natural habitats. Zoos. No, the zoos are a very famous place where you keep animals out of the natural place. Aquariums, botanic gardens, seed banks. Seed banks are places, very cold places that we keep seeds frozen in there. And if one day that species gets extinct, we just get a few of them there, we grow and we can place them back. So, Exit to conservation are usually less expensive. It's much cheaper to keep a zoo, even with the healthcare, with the, the food and all that stuff, it's much cheaper than keeping a gigantic preserve that would be needed to keep all those animals alive. Okay? It allows breeding programs. So we can breed one species here with another species there, we can mix genes. So it allows breeding animals that are where they were struggling in nature. So you can reintroduce them into nature. Now there's a video later, I'm going to talk more about that. In ex situ conservation, for example, you can have a controlled diet or healthcare in zoos or aquariums. So you, you can make the animals that are going to be living there to live longer than they would live in nature. So that's an advantage. Okay? It's very easy to use in education because it's easy to visit. So you take children from schools to visit zoos, you take children from schools to visit aquariums, botanic gardens, and they may learn the importance of preserving not only those animals that are over there, but the ones that are in the natural environment. So that's advantage as well. Disadvantage is that you have disrupted behavior. Sometimes the animals that live in there, they don't learn how to hunt. They don't learn how to live in nature. So it's quite difficult sometimes to reintroduce the adults that are there already. Okay? And it only targets the target species. So you can preserve a tiger in a zoo, but you're not going to preserve the entire ecosystem of a tiger in a zoo. For that, we need the in situ conservation. Okay? So, in situ, in its natural place, natural reserves, and on. Ex situ, out of its natural place, zoos, aquariums, botanic gardens, seed banks. Don't confuse in situ, ex situ. In situ, in its place, ex situ, out of its natural place. Okay. And just to illustrate an example of reintroduction of uh, animals, we have this video here, how wolves change rivers, and also this river here, the wolves that change rivers, two videos here about the same story, when wolves were reintroduced to Yellowstone. It's a beautiful story, not only on reintroduction of species, but also on how a keystone species can have a massive impact on an environment. Okay? And to mention another reintroduction program, we have the panda bears. Panda bears now, they are out of the extinction species list because they are recovering in nature, but they are only recovering nature for two reasons. One, the government from places where they live managed to keep preserves big enough to maintain the populations and also fighting the hunting so they're not hunted anymore and breeding programs, mixing organisms with different genes to create variation, and reintroducing the, 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 the youngs before they got uh, uh, adapted to live in a zoo. They are taught how to live in the jungle by guys dressed in, in pandas, and then they are introduced. And now the populations are going back and they are not in extinction uh, anymore. So we have some beautiful examples going on over there. I strongly suggest you to watch this, these videos, at least one of them. If you're going to be watching only one, watch this one. It's beautiful. You're going to enjoy it. Okay? So now you have a questionnaire here for you to see if you learn enough from this lesson. Okay? I see you in the next class.